I've taken a look at some interesting Mr. Accessories on this channel, but there's one that I haven't covered yet, which is perhaps the coolest of them all. Today, we're going to tap into the fun and dig into the Tap 2 project. Stick around and I'll take you through how it all works end to end and show you some of the interesting things that you didn't know it could do. I've been following the progress on the Tap 2 project for quite some time now, but I really haven't had much of a chance to jump into it until recently. For those of you that aren't familiar with the project, Tap 2 is an NFC system for the MISTER. NFC stands for Near Field Communication, and it's a technology that enables short-range wireless communication between an NFC-enabled device and an NFC reader. NFC devices can exist in various form factors, but you'll commonly see them implemented as plastic cards about the size of a standard credit card. And if you were to open up one of these cards, you'd find a microchip inside, which can store data. What's most interesting about this technology is that these NFC cards don't contain any sort of battery or any other means to power the chip. Instead, the chip is powered by an electromagnetic field when it's brought into close proximity to an NFC reader. Once the chip's powered on, a wireless communication protocol is used to transfer the data on the card. Now, what Tap2 does is it lets you associate NFC devices with games and other actions that the mister can perform. Then, to launch the game or invoke the action, you just need to bring the card close to the reader. We'll spend some time digging into how all this works, but first, let's take a look at what you need. Before we look at the hardware, I want you to know that I did not purchase my own Tap2 setup. It was generously donated to me by Wizzo, who's one of the primary developers on the project. That said, Wizzo gave me this starter kit without any expectation of review or a video in return. In fact, even though he sells a Tap2 starter bundle in his Etsy store, Wizzo really doesn't want to be in the business of selling the Tap2 hardware. And besides, the hardware isn't really anything special. Tap2 works with off-the-shelf USB NFC readers and standard NFC tags. All the readers that are listed as compatible in the Tap2 wiki are based on the PN532 chip, so any NFC reader that uses this chip should work. If you want something complete and standalone, you can pick up the ACR122U for around 40 US dollars. It comes in a nice plastic case, and it's something that you can leave on your table as is and start using right away. But you can also purchase one of these PN532 USB-C modules. They're a lot less expensive. You can find them online for under $10. However, as you can see, they come as a PCB, and you don't want to leave the board sitting out and exposed. So if you go with this option, you should make sure that you have a 3D printer or some other means to make an enclosure to house it in. And if you don't want to purchase an NFC reader, then you can use the NFC device that's already in your pocket, your smartphone. There's a Tap2 mobile app that you can download from the Apple or Google App Store. And for a mere $6.99, you can unlock the feature to use your phone as the NFC reader. This is a great option and it helps financially support the Tap2 project. In addition to the NFC reader, you also need some NFC tags. Most of the folks with a Tap2 setup are using standard NFC cards. There are different types of cards available which you can find on Amazon for 30 to 50 cents each. And if you turn to AliExpress, you can get them for even less money than that. Once you have your NFC reader, you need to run through a quick setup process on your mister. The easiest approach is to use the update all script. This will install the Tap2 files on your mister for you. However, I found that update all doesn't always pull down the latest version of Tap2. Because of that, I'd actually recommend downloading the Tap2 files directly from the GitHub repository. You'll need to browse to the repository URL, which is in this video's description, 
and download the latest package from the releases page. Then extract the contents of the zip file into the scripts folder on your MISTER's micro SD card. Then you'll need to turn on your MISTER and navigate to the scripts menu. From there, you'll want to launch the tap2 file. This will install a background service that continuously monitors for tap2 commands. At this point, you can go ahead and plug in your NFC reader and restart your MISTER. When it boots back up, the service will start automatically and you're now ready to configure a couple of cards. Each card will need to be set up with the specific action that you want the TAP2 service to execute. Now, there are two ways to do this. First, you can use the script called tapped UI, which is provided in the GitHub repository. To launch it, you just need to select tapped UI in the Mr. Scripts menu. This script provides a couple of different tools that can be helpful for configuring your TAP2 setup or troubleshooting it if something goes wrong. For setting up the cards, you'll want to select the right option. From here, you can browse your list of games by system and then select the one that you want to load onto the card. Then when you choose Write to Tag, you'll be prompted to tap the card that you want to associate with that game. The second option, and the one that I would recommend, is to set up the cards with the free version of the mobile app. Once you launch the app, it'll connect to your mister over your home network. And then when connected, you can go into the Create menu, search for a game on your mister, and write it to an NFC tag. Now that everything's set up, all you need to do is make sure your NFC reader is plugged in and tap your card. When the tap registers, you'll hear an audible tone, which is a nice touch to the overall experience. And then, after a moment, the action will take effect. The system is very responsive. Most of the time, it feels like the game loads instantaneously. For example, this card is configured to launch Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. When I tap the card, notice how quickly it launches into the SNES core and loads the game. When the system's in tap mode, you can either just tap the card or leave it on the reader. Leaving it there won't trigger another tap. But if you remove the card from the reader, you can then retap it to re-trigger the action again. This retap feature is especially nice for cards like this one. This card, when tapped, launches a random arcade game. So when you retap the card, it'll launch a different game. This is a great way to explore a large game library and discover some new favorites. Another aspect of Tap2 that's really nice is that you can tap a card at any time. You don't need to be in the Mr. Menu. So if you're in the middle of a game and want to play something else, you can just tap the card of the new game and it'll launch right away. And the cards aren't just limited to launching games. For example, this card will simulate inserting a coin into an arcade machine. So you can start up your arcade game and just tap the card to insert a coin. You do need to be careful with this feature, however, because you won't be prompted to leave the game that you're currently playing. Let's say you're playing a game of the arcade classic 1942. Your plane gets shot down and you want to insert another coin to continue. So you grab your coin card and tap it, only to realize that you accidentally picked up the wrong card and loaded up a game of E.T. for the Atari instead. The way the coin card works is by using another feature of Tap2, the ability to simulate key presses. And if you use the Mr.'s built-in capability of mapping keyboard buttons to the gamepad, then you can also simulate gamepad button presses. And that leads to some interesting scenarios. For example, here I have a card that launches Contra on the NES. If you're like me, you need a little help to get through the game. So I've loaded up this card with the button sequence for the Konami code. After you start up Contra with the first card, you can then scan the Konami code card during the loading screen. And as you can see, we now have 30 lives. The whole idea around Tap2 is really cool, but it's this capability that I'm excited about the most. It turns the NFC reader into a device that augments the gaming experience. 
you can have an experience similar to what Nintendo envisioned with their Amiibo toys, but on classic game and computer systems. And speaking of Amiibos, they work with Tap2 as well. Unlike standard NFC tags, however, Amiibos are read-only, so you can't load it with commands. So in order for them to work, Tap2 has an internal mapping database that lets you associate the Amiibo's identifier with an individual Tap2 command. The downside to this approach is that since the command is stored on the Mr. and not the NFC tag, the tag will only work on Mr. setups where you've configured that mapping. But you're not just limited to using cards or Amiibos. You can use any NFC tag that supports the NTAG standard. Right now, there are three versions specified in this standard, NTAG 213, 215, and 216. The main difference between the three is the amount of data the tag will store. Most of the standard off-the-shelf NFC cards that you buy from Amazon or AliExpress are going to be NTAG 215. With 504 bytes of storage, these cards are more than enough for the vast majority of use cases on the Mister. But you can also buy NFC stickers. And you'll find that some of these use the NTAG 213 standard, which only supports 144 bytes of data. Now, this will still be enough storage for most scenarios. But if you have really long file paths or want to use complex custom commands, then these stickers might be too small. But even in those cases, you can still use the same approach as the Amiibos and create a mapping for the tag. That will let you use a command that exceeds the storage size of the NFC tag. When using these NFC stickers, you can turn pretty much anything into a device that's compatible with Tap2. In fact, one of the things I've been doing is opening up my physical game cartridges and attaching an NFC sticker to the inside of the shell. Then you can tap the game cartridge to your NFC reader to launch the game. This seems like a small, inconsequential thing, but it's a very surreal experience. It's like my brain knows that this shouldn't work, but it does. And if you have a 3D printer, you can take it to the next level and print all sorts of NFC tags that will activate games. And if you do want to just stick with NFC cards, you have plenty of customization options as well. You could just take the quick and dirty route and write on the NFC card with a marker. But if you really want to build up a nice collection, then I'd suggest printing some labels for your cards. And that's really easy to do with the Tap2 Generator app. This web app lets you either upload your own images or browse the vast built-in image database for game art. Once you select an image, you can then choose the card layout and change the color scheme to your liking. Then when you're ready, you can click the print button to download a PDF to send to your printer. Now I've been printing my labels on glossy vinyl sticker paper. It's a little bit more expensive, but it makes the labels look fantastic. In addition to customizing the cards, there are folks in the community that are creating custom enclosures for the NFC reader itself. One of my favorites is this Commodore 1541 drive enclosure designed by Bedroom Ninja. The version that I made here has two LEDs. The green LED on the left is wired to the internal power LED on the NFC reader. And the red LED on the right is wired to one of the data transfer lines. Overall, this provides a really neat effect. Bedroom Ninja also released this other enclosure with similar design characteristics to the PC Engine. And he's working on a Famicom Disk System enclosure, which is looking really good. If you really want to complete the experience and have it feel like a disk drive, you can go into the Tap2 mobile app and enable Insert Mode. Then, you insert the card to launch a game. And when you remove it, you're taken back to the main Mr. Menu. In addition to setting up cards and changing some of the Tap2 settings, the mobile app can also be used to remotely launch games. Just select the game you want to play and touch the play button at the bottom right. The reason the app can remotely interact with the Mister is because the Tap2 service running on the Mister provides an API or an application programming interface. 
Any device that's on the same network as the MISTER can call this API to invoke different TAP2 actions. Here I have an API debugger called Postman running on my PC, and I'm pointing it to the TAP2 API, which is listening on port 7497 on my MISTER. If I hit the status endpoint with a GET request, you can see that the API returns back the status of the service, including information about the NFC readers I have connected, as well as the system and game that's currently playing. And if I send a GET request to the game's endpoint, I get back a list of games that I have in my MISTER library, with options to query by specific systems. If I send a GET request to the launch endpoint with a game path, it'll start the game right up. And then hitting it again with a delete request will stop the game and return you back to the main menu. Having a RESTful API running on the MISTER opens up the door for a ton of new use cases. As an experiment, I used an ESP32 microcontroller and connected it to a PN532 NFC module. I programmed the ESP32 to call the TAP2 API on my MISTER over my home network. And the result is that I now have a wireless NFC reader to launch games with. Even if you decide not to go the NFC route, you could use a dedicated mobile app, a desktop app, or really anything that can make standard HTTP web requests to browse your library and launch games. I'm really excited to see what others in the community are gonna do with this capability. There are lots of really neat things that Tap2 can do. But the thing that I most appreciate about it is the psychological benefit. By moving your virtual game library into the physical world, you're forcing yourself to narrow down the options. And if I can be honest, this goes a long way towards battling something that I personally struggle with, the paradox of choice. This is a psychological effect, which says that while some choice is good, too much choice can lead to negative feelings such as overwhelm, regret, or if you're like me, decision paralysis. Yeah, the cards are rewritable, so you're not stuck with what you put on the card. But if you change out the game on the card, you also need to re-customize the card with different artwork. And for me, that's just enough resistance to keep me from constantly swapping out games. I think the things I've explored in this video are just the starting point for the TAP2 project. Wizzo and the team are hard at work adding new features and use cases, and I would even expect it to evolve into a larger ecosystem that goes beyond the MISTER. In fact, it's already started to go in that direction. One member of the Commodore community created a C64 flash cart that natively supports TAP2. Overall, I have to say that TAP2 is my new favorite accessory for the MISTER. It's inexpensive, easy to use, and provides a ton of value to your retro gaming experience. A huge thanks goes out to Wizzo for providing me with a basic TAP2 setup to get me going. If you plan on adding TAP2 to your MISTER, please consider supporting the team by unlocking the premium features in the mobile app. And if you want to purchase a physical NFC reader, there are links to the ones I've been using in the video's description. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. And until then, go make something cool.